Hey, Hungry Nation, I'm back in New York. He's back. And better than ever. Yeah. Anyway, it's Valentine's Day, and my girlfriend's favorite food is red velvet cake. So in order to keep it a secret, Max came over to my place, and we made his girlfriend Stephanie a red velvet cake for Valentine's Day. This week on Working Class Foodies. This red velvet cake recipe is based off of Cake Man Ravens, a bakery in my neighborhood of Brooklyn famous for their delicious triple layered red velvet cake. Red velvet cake is a southern cake made with just a little bit of cocoa powder and red food coloring. Commercial red food coloring is made with the crushed carapaces of a South American insect which is not harmful and has no flavor, but it's not kosher or vegetarian or vegan friendly. Commercial red food dyes are also made with synthetic dyes. We wanted to keep our cake natural and vegan friendly, so we decided to make our own food dye using beets. So to make the dye for the red velvet cake, first what you want to do is wash and trim your beets. Put them in a pan and cover them by an inch with water. And simmer for 30 minutes. Then strain and reserve the liquid. And people create their own troubles. Peel and cut the beets. When trouble comes, she just sleeps around in And let them sit in the liquid for four hours. After four hours, restrain your beets and you've got plenty of natural red food coloring. And beets for borscht. Now the only thing is that this naturally made red food dye won't hold its color forever, so use it fairly quickly. It's also good beet juice though, it's a great base for a borscht. Yummy. Borscht. Once we made the dye, it was time to make the cake. First, preheat your oven to 350. And then butter and flour either two 8-inch cake pans or one large springform pan. Because we used a springform pan, we buttered and floured a piece of parchment paper and lined the pan with that just to make sure the batter wouldn't leak through. Sift together your dry ingredients. This is two and a half cups of cake flour, one and a half cups of sugar, one to three teaspoons of cocoa powder, depending on whether you want your cake to actually have a little chocolate flavor or not. But keep in mind, the more cocoa powder you put in, the darker your cake will come out. A teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of salt. Sift and whisk this all together, and then set it aside and then mix together the wet ingredients. Two large eggs. One tablespoon of room temperature butter. One and a half cups of vegetable oil. One cup of buttermilk, low fat is okay. A teaspoon of vanilla extract. Two tablespoons of red food coloring, or a little more if you're using homemade food coloring because it is a little bit weaker, and one teaspoon of distilled white vinegar. And beat the wet ingredients together until combined. And then slowly incorporate the dry into the wet until you have a smooth batter. Pour the batter into your prepared pans, either two 8-inch cake pans or one larger pan. It's okay if there are a few lumps in your batter, they will cook out, but for the most part you want it to be smooth. Bake the cakes, rotating halfway through until a toothpick inserted in the center of each cake comes out clean. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's time to finish making our red velvet cake and serve it up to Stephanie. <coughs> Bake the cakes, rotating halfway through until a toothpick inserted in the center of each cake comes out clean. About 25 to 30 minutes. You are Let the cakes cool for five minutes. Else. You are something else. Then invert each cake. I can't on believe that you exist after the people I've met. Imagine if you and I and had kissed again, and all the trouble Now that our cake is out of the oven, it's time to let it cool completely before we can frost it. Red velvet cake is traditionally served with cream cheese frosting. Super easy to make. There are a few different ways to make cream cheese frosting. A lot of them involve butter. I don't really like to add butter to my cream cheese frosting. So I add a little bit of milk to make it softer and stuff. Combine 16 ounces of softened cream cheese with a tablespoon. 
teaspoon or two of milk, about a tablespoon of vanilla extract, and anywhere from one and a half cups to three cups of powdered sugar, depending on how sweet you like your frosting. I like to keep my frosting a little on the tart side, but I really get that cream cheese flavor, and it doesn't compete with the cake for sweetness. Beat the cream cheese, milk, vanilla extract, and powdered sugar together into a nice, smooth frosting. Then refrigerate it for at least half an hour and I feel like the cake is cooling. All you have to do is lose that attitude. If you made one large cake like I did, very easy to try to make a cake. Use a long piece of dental floss to wrap around the cake in case you're waiting for you. Bring your hands together so that they cross. Make sure your floss is on the cake. We have this whole beautiful cake here. What do you think it costs, right? Like a commercial cake costs how much? Like $30, $40. $40, $50 in New York. Well, guys, guess what? This entire cake costs $9.70. And that, yes, is including the beets for making the red food dye. You know what that comes down to in an eight slice cake? A buck 22. We win. Valentine's Day is ours. Valentine's Day, working class foodie style. So that's what we made for Valentine's Day this year. If you're looking for more great Valentine's Day recipes, check out Hungry for Love, featuring all your favorite Hungry Nation shows, bringing you great Valentine's Day content. And if you're looking for an awesome DIY gift for your Valentine, check out Secret Life of a Bio Nerd's adorable DIY teddy bears. They're so cute. Let us know what you made for Valentine's Day and we will feature it on our blog. And we'll see you next week on Working Class Foodies. Love you. Hearts. Hearts. Check out some of our other episodes to find recipes that would go great with this dish by clicking any of these boxes around my face.